Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, as Rich said, my name is Mike Kiaft. I'm an assistant scoutmaster uh, with Troop 170 in Syosset. And uh, Rich and I did wood badge together. And we also did a trainer's edge course back in May. And I did a very, very quick demo uh, using some first aid moulage techniques. And Rich said, you know what? Looks interesting. Could be a, a really great uh, um, you know, round table topic. So if you sort of take a look at me, and my daughter, Danielle, is here. Um, we're going to uh, demo some uh, different wounds for you guys. Has anybody ever used moulage uh, as part of first aid with their uh, troop at all? Um, OK, it's really uh, it's a very, very effective technique. Um, and a uh, little history for me is I was a scout in the 70s in Manhattan, in Upper Manhattan, and one of our assistant scout master was a, a, a physician, and he was very into first aid, and one of the things he used to do is a lot of demos, and uh, me being a 12-year-old, I was totally grossed out by this stuff. It was just, uh, I had to leave the room, I remember. And it wasn't until they asked me to be a victim uh, and they made me up, and I said, wow, this is really one of the coolest things I've ever done. And as a 12-year-old, you know, being a victim and having blood all over you was really, really amazing. And I kind of remember that over the years. And when I did my outdoor leader skills training, one of the stations happened to be first aid. And lo and behold, they were still using first aid moulage. And it really, um, you know, I said to myself, I really need to bring this back to my troop and we need to do some more of this. So I'm sort of in my infancy of doing this uh, with my troop. We started out doing a few things last year. I'm hoping to do some more this year. And you know, coincidentally, with everything going on with the hurricane, it's sort of a really a good topic for you to bring back to your boys. And um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm going to show you some techniques that really a very, very minimal cost. And I'm going to show you some other things with some a little bit more expensive makeup that you can get into. Uh, my wife thinks I'm out of my mind with all this. Uh, you know, I, I tell her, honey, you know, can you pick me up uh, some flesh colored makeup? And we went to the dollar store, we went to the makeup section, and I got all excited. I said, oh my god, that's really cheap. Um, you know, I want to buy this. Uh, and she thinks I'm crazy. So uh, there's stuff all over the house. I was telling somebody I have chicken bones drying on the, the, uh, the boiler uh, to dry them out to act as uh, frac compound fracture bones. And she went down to the basement and said, what are you doing? Uh, and I said, hey, you know what? Everybody has to have a hobby. And you know, this is something that I just find interesting. I don't know why. I am not a makeup artist. Um, but I'm learning as I'm going, and there are some things that, you know, you can pick up very easily on the internet. There's a lot of resources. As a matter of fact, Rich is going to send out a link to my Dropbox folder, which has a tremendous amount of resources, and it also has a first aid jeopardy uh, quiz that we're going to go over, and we'll hopefully have time to do that. I did that with this with my troop last year, and it was a lot of fun, and um, we all got prizes, and they really enjoyed it. So um, let's talk about first aid moulage and the definition, if I can find my, okay. So moulage is really about creating realistic first aid makeup, and it can be very, very simple. It's mostly for training purposes. Uh, the, um, you'll find it in the military. So why use first aid moulage? Um, anybody? OK, it's visual. Any, anything else? Why? I think we mentioned something about um, you know, the scouts. What do you think? OK, a fear factor. Fear factor. Anything else in terms? Simulating wounds, okay? And remember I told you that I was really grossed out by, you know, the wounds. I think part of this is that if you expose them to this kind of thing, the blood, um, they might not necessarily run out, you know, the, 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 the third time you do it, possibly the first or the second. So they become conditioned to seeing, you know, the blood and the gore. And um, when they encounter a real injury, they you know, visually understand what, you know, what they need to do. So it's used by the military. 
Uh, quite frequently, EMTs do a lot of this. My brother is an uh, EMT in New Jersey. Uh, they do a lot of practice simulations of wounds, and um, he tells me they, they have some gentleman who's really into it, and he does some really, really good first aid. Um, also, it provides an element of realism, which is very important. We want to show the scouts that, you know, this is something that could happen, uh, you know, to anybody at any time. Okay, visual demos, I, I'm a visual learner, and if I see something, I'm going to remember it more than if somebody reads it out of a, a textbook, and I think, you know, that's important for our guys. Um, the other thing is it improves the, um, the ability to learn by increasing interest, because um, we're competing with YouTube and video games, and you guys know holding their attention for more than 10 minutes is not an easy task. So what we're looking to do is make these topics a little more interesting. And first aid, moulage, or realistic first aid, really sort of lends itself to, um, to the topic. And it really, I think it, it, it really helps them uh, understand it a lot better. So um, lectures are really boring. You know, uh, I know from school, I don't want to see anybody stand up there and read to me. I want to see something that's a little more interesting. Um, and it's fun. The, the fun aspect is really important because we want to make it interesting for them as well. So one uh, very quick thing about bloodborne pathogens. BSA has a policy. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, uh, but they take this very seriously when it comes to uh, any exposure to uh, blood. Um, their policy, and I don't know if you can all read it, is they, um, they want you to treat all the viruses um, very, very seriously. Um, gloves are very important. And I'm gonna, you're gonna see me put gloves on. Uh, it's really important for, you, for them to understand that exposure to any bloodborne pathogens um, really needs to be minimized. And the BSA policy is uh, very clear. They want us to protect the boys and make sure that we have gloves available on our first aid kits. Now, what's to say that if they're in the street and they see somebody bleeding, um, their policy is, you know, take a rag, take a towel, a shirt, try to uh, stop the bleeding, but if you can help it, don't get the blood on you. And if you do, you need to make sure that you wash it off as quickly as possible. So we need to stress that when we're talking about um, anything uh, first aid that includes any um, blood and any wounds. Okay, so again, wearing gloves is very important. We want to get the boys involved with both the uh, creating the wounds, uh, you know, acting as makeup artists, and being victims as well. Allergies, something to be aware of. Some uh, folks are allergic to some of the makeup I'm going to show you. Latex allergies are very common. And I'm going to show you some latex. Uh, matter of fact, this uh, appliance, or um, prosthetic as it's called, is made out of latex. So we want to be careful uh, if we're working with somebody who has an allergy. Obviously, we don't want to use any makeup products, any um, latex products. Uh, we want to make sure that the boys are aware that there's going to be blood involved. I had a boy last year who had to run out of the room. He told me, I just can't stand it. Um, we did a, a surprise first aid wound with blood squirting out, and the kid was just so grossed out. He, had, he said, Mr. Half, I have to leave. And you know what? You're going to find that. Some of the boys are going to be squeamish. Um, but I think as you do this and as you repeat this year after year, you're going to find that the boys are, you know, become more accustomed to it. Um, old clothes are important. I've already gotten stains on my uniform. Um, I remember as a boy going home when I was a victim with blood all over, the fake blood, and my mother screaming at me, you know, oh my God, what did you do? You know, you stained your clothing. So be aware that that could be an issue as well. Also, protecting surfaces. If you are, you know, your meeting area, you don't want to stain the floor. 
the majority of the stuff that I'm going to show you is washable, but it will stain. So you might want to think about if you have somebody laying on the floor and the blood squirting out, you might want to think about using some plastic and making sure you're protecting the surfaces because we, you know, the stuff might stain, um, you know, the floors and anything it gets on. Okay, so fake skin. We need to create a base for our wounds. So I'm gonna I'm gonna p actually pass around some examples. Um, this is let me just find my place here. Okay. Okay. The first one I'm gonna show you is the cornstarch one. Danielle, can you pass that around? Okay. You're gonna notice that um, it's it's a it has color to it, and what that is is that's that's Vaseline, regular cornstarch and uh, cocoa powder. We use cocoa powder to uh, match the, um, the um, skin coloration. Um, you know, for folks who have darker complexions, we're gonna put in a little bit more cocoa powder. Um, this is a flower, this is one made with flour. Now you notice that that's a little shiny. This one is a little more dull. I use, um, I use flour for that, and that's a little duller. So there are some times when, you know, and it's, it, it's Vaseline. I got to tell you, my hands, after working with this stuff, are nice and, nice and um, you know, I don't need any moisturizer. So that's one of the advantages of working with the Vaseline. My hands are, uh, have never been as nice. Um, the other thing I'm going to show you that's, um, that, that is also common, you'll find this is suggested, and I'm not a big fan of this. This is actually unflavored gelatin that's been colored with food coloring. It has a very unpleasant smell and I don't like to use it that often. Some people like it. I'm not a big fan of it, but I wanted to show you it as an example, um, as something that you possibly could use. Okay, um, the next thing I'm gonna sh pass around is actually regular plumber's putty. Plumber's putty is not toxic. It has some petroleum-based stuff in it. In a pinch, it actually works really well. You don't have to mix it up um, in any kind of proportion. It comes right out of the container. And you can see it's um, a fairly decent color. And um, you know the odors are, can be a little bit strong, uh, but uh, y it's got a little Vaseline mixed in there, so, but, and it's a little bit harder to work with, but like I said, if you're kind of desperate to make a wound, it's, uh, it's one of the perfect things you can use, and, and again, it's very cheap. So these are low-cost things. You can buy this in any store. Uh, the Knox Unflavored Gelatin comes um, in any supermarket. You can get this. So uh, that's something that, you know, some options. Um, okay. I actually like the Vaseline better. Are you, do you have anything with Vaseline? No. Um, the Vaseline with the cornstarch and or the, the flour is really good. And um, what I like about it is it doesn't break down. The problem with the gelatin is you can really only use this for maybe about an hour and it starts to dry out a lot. So, and it's very hard to work with. It gets very sticky and I just, it's not one of my favorites to work with. Some people like it um, online, a lot of people use it. But again, I like to use the, um, you know, the, the um, Vaseline with the cornstarch. Um, in terms of mixing this stuff, I just take it and I kind of throw it in there. And when it looks right, um, that's fine. You know, um, proportion-wise, it's sort of by eye. Uh, some of the stuff that I, um, that I, um, the um, uh, hand, not the handouts, but the stuff that Rich is going to send you, I think there's a recipe there for it, and it's kind of experimenting. So, and I would say, let the boys do it. <laughs> so, you know, you can say here, here's the Vaseline, the cornstarch, and, you know, the cocoa, cocoa powder. We did this on our last Weeblows Invitational, and the stuff was just all over the place. It was a mess. But, you know what, they had to, you know, get a feeling for it, and it, it actually worked out okay. So, um... By the way, the other thing is, um, for every question you ask, I have chocolate kisses, and my daughter was supposed to throw you a kiss, so um, do you want to just um, give everybody a chocolate kiss uh, to start them out? Sort of forgot about that one. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next thing, which is, okay, oh, liquid latex is the other thing I wanted to show you. Sorry, guys. 
Um, liquid latex is a really, really cool thing to work with. I just started to um, experiment with this uh, in, in the fall. And um, Party City is a really great resource, uh, especially during Halloween. They have a, a tremendous amount of stuff. Um, this product was from Party City. It's okay. The problem with this is it dries cl too clear. Um, what I did find online, and um, I'm going to give you that website in a second, was um, uh, you want to look for flesh latex. And flesh latex is about the color. This actually, um, this one and the one on my forehead was flesh latex. And um, it's more of a, um, it's, it blends into the skin well. The other thing I'm going to show you in a few minutes is uh, makeup. So you can use makeup to blend this in. And um, it's very effective. The problem with the flesh latex is it takes a little time to dry. And um, there's ammonia in there. The, the smell can be a little overwhelming. So just be aware of that. And what you can do is I used a, um, for Danielle, if you want to show them your wound. That's actually a, f we did that before we left. Um, that's actually, and there's a link to that wound. Uh, it's very, very easy, and what we did was we, uh, we just used a blow dryer. That's actually rolled up toilet paper. Um, it created the ridges that you see, and um, we, um, we put the, some latex on there, used a blow dryer, and then put some, um, some makeup and some fake blood. And it's actually, you know, it's a pretty, it looks like it's a pretty big gaping wound. So, again, very, very simple. And you roll up the toilet paper, and that creates the ridge. So it's, again, very, very simple, but effective because it demonstrates, you know, a pretty nasty wound. Um, okay, so let's do makeup and face paint. That's another thing that you're going to find uh, that's very um, low cost, uh, especially, again, in Party City. They have all kinds of um, different kind of makeup that you can buy. Um, it comes in um, one of these little trays. Um, all kinds of different colors. It comes in tubes as well. You can buy makeup kits with, um, with different uh, colors. Uh, the high-end stuff is very expensive. Um, my wife bought me some eyeshadow. And <laughs> so again, you know, it's blue and you can use it for a bruise as well. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, okay. So, um, in terms of burns, Danielle has a couple burns on her, um, one's on her wrist, that's actually supposed to be a marshmallow, a burnt marshmallow, and um, what I did was I took some of the Vaseline, that thing in the middle, it's supposed to be a blister, it's actually a, a, a bubble from, believe it or not, <laughs> bubble wrap. So. You can cut, and this again, my wife thinks I'm crazy because most people would want to pop it. No, I'm cutting the pieces out of the bubbles and uh, using that for a blister. So you can get ones that are a little bit smaller. And uh, all we did was take some uh, red, uh, I believe that was um, blood somewhere. I always gelled blood and we put some gel blood on there, and that's a cotton ball with some black marker on it. So again, you know, you're trying to convey to them, uh, you know, what th that it's a burn, and um, that it's a second degree burn. On the other wrist, really simple, burgundy hairspray. Um, you can pick this up in any drugstore. Party City has it. Party City should be paying me for, uh, you know, for giving you guys this information and for promoting them. They actually have a really good selection. This is red hairspray that I found. It was $2.99. Um, the only problem with Party City I found, and it's kind of strange, is that you would think the, ha the Halloween stuff would go on sale after Halloween. It didn't. And because I went back a few times, I said, gee, you know, aren't you guys putting this on sale? Because there's some stuff I want to buy. They're like, no, we don't put the, put the stuff on half price or anything to get rid of it. So I was a little disappointed, but you know what? When you, um, when you need it, uh, it's, a good th it's a good source. So, um, okay. Um, heat exhaustion is a good, uh, you can use uh, the, uh, the face paint, you can use some white and some red. You wanna create a flushed look. So the red and the white face paint is really, really effective. Um, makeup pencils are really good for snake bites 
All you need is two dots for a poisonous snake bite. You can even use a black Sharpie. I use that also. And two dots of blood, it looks like fang marks. Uh, and again, really, really simple. For non-poisonous stink bites, uh, that actually looks like a row of teeth. You can use the, um, one of the putties. You can use either the, um, the, um, the Vaseline or you can use the uh, plumber's putty and just take a serrated knife, a plastic knife, and put little rows in there and then put some blood in it. It looks like a non-poisonous snake bite as well. So, you know, you start to get a little creative, uh, which is sort of interesting. In terms of, um, he of um, shock, if you want to uh, portray shock, you very simple white makeup and blue lips. Uh, which will indicate that the person is cyanotic, that um, they're starting to, um, um, their, their, um, their air, their oxygen level is starting to go down. So a little blue makeup on the lips really is very effective for that. Um, any questions, by the way, at all? Any, any, any comments? <laughs> I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you. I'm throwing a lot of stuff. And I, I again, um, Rich has the stuff that he's going to send to you. He's going to actually sh uh, send you the PowerPoint as well that has some information on it. Okay, so um, a full thickness burns, which are, used to be called third degree, where the skin is charred. You can take uh, black uh, charcoal. It's regular charcoal that I put in a Ziploc bag, took a hammer, and crushed it. And um, you can sort of sprinkle this on the wound to simulate black, the blackened look of the skin when it's charred. It's a messy. Yes, I took a briquette and uh, just, you know, pounded it and made it, made it, you know, into powder. And it was really, um, it was very messy, but it's a good, um, a good thing. The other thing you can do is, um, you can char, if, the, if the, the, um, the scout has some old clothing, you can char some of the clothing uh, before, uh, you know, ahead of time, and that can, you know, show that the person actually had burnt clothing, and then you can do your wound around that. So another effective uh, way of using, um, you know, clothing. And, uh, oh, the other thing was talcum powder and commercial face powder. One of the major problems with, with using makeup is if somebody goes to touch their face, they're going to smear the makeup. Talcum powder is a very effective uh, thing to use online. They have this no color theatrical powder. But around Halloween, this stuff is really hard to get. You, you know, and, and of course, I went online to this company, FX Warehouse, uh, which I'll put up in a second, and um, they have all this stuff. I was like a kid in a candy store. I was like, oh my God, what else do they have? Wow, it was amazing. Um, some really cool stuff. So this is commercially done stuff. And what you would do is you would take a powder puff, put some of the, um, the powder on here, and just you know go over the face. And what that does is it sets the makeup so that if the um, if the scout goes to you know scratch, they're not going to smear it as much. So, but again, be careful with this stuff because some of the kids do not like. Um, putting makeup on their faces. Um, one of the things um, that uh, I was going to talk to our troop about is maybe creating a permission slip um, if a scout wants to be a victim ahead of time and getting the parents to approve that. Because some parents do not like their, their you know, boys to come home with all this smeared makeup and that gets on the clothing. So you can, you know, tell them in advance a few weeks, let them know that your son, you know, would like to be a victim. Is it okay? And just get the parents approval for something like that. Okay, um, blood. My next favorite topic. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling my wife thinks I'm crazy. I'll keep reiterating that. Um, really, really simple, inexpensive stuff would be the dark corn syrup, uh, the blue and the red food coloring, liquid starch, corn starch. The only problem with that stuff is it attracts bees because of the corn starch. And it's very, very sticky and messy. So um, if you want to pass that around to folks, that's actually a sample of that blood. Um, dish soap and food coloring is another thing that you can use. Uh, I like the Halloween fake blood. So you can get the bottle of blood from Party City. 
<laughs> as much blood as you can ever use. Um, looks and flows like real blood, and it does. It does stain, but it does wash off. It is washable. Um, the other thing you can get, and one of the things I did do was instead of carrying this around, uh, I put it in an Elmer's um, school glue thing, so um, it was much easier to, um, to work with. Um, the other thing you can get is um, blood gel. This is uh, a gel blood that doesn't flow. That's actually what's on here and on here and on my face. Um, it doesn't flow as much as sort of a gel gelatinous substance. And um, um, I think this was $4.99 in Party City. And I've used this quite a few times. Vampire blood is something you find also. I mean, you, you, like, you go there and there's a wall of stuff. And you're like, okay. I don't know what to buy first. So, but um, that's, that's something. And the food coloring you can get in any supermarket um, in the pack. So is it time for a chocolate kiss for everybody yet? Yeah. Why don't you hand out a couple of kisses to everybody? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. Squirting blood. I'm going to show you a picture in a few minutes of my son who... Um, who was uh, working at one of our assistant scoutmaster as a fundraiser in his church. He does a haunted house. And um, I will show you him with squirting blood. Um, it was quite interesting. Um, the oxygen tubing that you find commonly, um, all this is is an earwax bulb that I found in the drugstore. You can fill this up with the fake blood. And what you would end up doing is uh, the scout would sort of hold this and you can hide, and this is, what, this is what I did for my surprise injury. It was very messy, that's the only thing. And I had the scout, you know, push the, the plunger every so often, and the blood was squirting out. It was actually really cool. And then you just, you sort of tape the tubing down, and you, you hide this using the fake skin, and it's pretty effective. Uh, the other thing is these, plun these medicine plungers, uh, you can use these as well. So I tell you, get very creative. So again, it fits right on the end of the tubing, and um, you have the scout just kind of give it a little push, and you would fill this up with blood as well. So um, the website is fxwarehouse.info. That's um, if you do a Google search for uh, realistic makeup or uh, theater theatrical makeup. That's one of the one. That's actually one I had ordered from. Um, I spent a lot of money there. <laughs> Don't tell your mother. <laughs> kisses, give kisses. Okay, so um, so that was blood. Okay. Wound objects and methods. Okay. There's a lot of different things you can use. Um, I talked about a plastic knife. Uh, you can use pieces of wood. I have a bag here that I have um, different pieces of wood, okay? I have pieces of wood where you can do a puncture wound. Um, you can use any one of those fake skins, and you can see, this is, I'm gonna talk about it in a second, this is actually a latex appliance. I have pencils, I have fish hooks. The fish hooks are, um, you have to be a little careful with those. What you need to do is dull them first, um, take the point off because you don't want anybody being injured by a real fish hook. So what I did was I just sort of ground down the fish hook a little bit. I took the end off. And uh, the other thing is nails. Okay. Um, all I did was cut the end off. And um, you can use any one of those and sort of have the nail sticking out of there with a little blood. Again, it's very effective in... Um, and showing a wound, okay? So, um, uh, colored glass. The one on my forehead is actually a CD case. Uh, I took a pair of um, uh, diagonal pliers and I cut out some of the, uh, the glass. And um, that's, um, I keep that in a little thing here. I like the colored glass because the, the, you can see that a little bit better. The clear is okay, but any color is better because it sort of shows up a little bit um, easier. Okay. Uh, snake bite we talked about. Okay, bubble wrap, which was that injury. Again, uh, it simulates a blister. Uh, cotton balls, 
with magic marker, uh, bleach chicken bones. Okay. So what you can do with these is you can, um, again, my son likes, um, he likes chicken. He likes the chicken legs. I'm like, don't throw those bones out. Okay. Keep, I want save those bones for me. So I actually bleach them, put them in some bleach. Um, they turn white. And all I did was cut the ends off. And again, what you can do to simulate a compound fracture is, again, using any one of those uh, fake skins is uh, embed it in your arm, add some fake blood, and you're good to go. So again, very effective, um, but it's, um, it portrays a broken bone. And I think that, um, that happens to be one of my favorites. <laughs> um, Okay, any others that you can think of in terms of um, any other fake wounds that sort of come to mind that you, um, you know, that you might have in, you know, in, in your heads or something you might think of? I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, okay, you can do that. Yeah, I've seen that also. Uh, you can get those, uh, they're actually candy eyes, and you can do that. You, that, that's, you know, it's always possible. Um, I'm trying to make yeah. it disgusting. Right. I mean, you want to really, you want to really make it kind of gross for them because, you know, these are things that they might come up, you know, they might encounter. You know, you don't know what's going to happen in your daily life. So, um, you know, it's, it's something they need to understand that, that they might have to uh, deal with. So, um, okay. So advanced makeup text techniques. These are a little more pricey. Bone and scar wax is really, really good. That's this over here. Um, it's actually, it's a waxy material. You can buy it in a container. This is the small, by the way. Uh, they make bigger ones. Um, this is from the FX Warehouse.info website. And um, I think this was about $10. It's a little pricey, but I like it because um, all you need to do is, you know, take it right out of here, uh, put it into a ball, kind of put it on your skin, and um, it really, it, it blends in very well. So, and you can use makeup to color these. Now, sealers are something that you can get online, uh, the wa especially the wax. These are sealers that will seal the wax so that when you go to put makeup on it, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, this is a makeup sealer. Where is it? Um, Where's my, oh, here's my makeup sealer. Okay, it's a spray. And remember I was talking about the face powder a minute ago? This is a little bit higher end. Uh, this would be, if you have some makeup on, you would spray this, let it dry, and the great thing about this is the makeup won't smear. Um, again, this was I, uh, professional stuff. Uh, a little, it's called, um, this is called Final Seal. And um, again, it's a, you don't really want to use this on the face, but on any other part of the body, this is, you know, this is okay to use. So, okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Well, you know, this is the bottle that it comes in, so you, you know, you're obviously you're going to spray it, and then, you know, the wax, no, because the what you know what it's you could, but once you've put the blood on there, it's gonna you know it's gonna change the color and it's a little bit you know uh, it's not gonna be as effective. So I it's sort of disposable in a way, um, you know. This versus the, the cheaper stuff, again, this is a little more higher end, but what I like about this is it comes right out of here. Uh, you, all the, well, what I did was I took a toothpick, I made a little slit in there, added some blood, and that was it. So, you know, versus mixing up everything. But again, it's a little more costlier. So, right, right. Right, uh, they would, uh, if you let them. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's why, I, you know, I, I started out a little bit cheaper and, you know, I sort of, you know, worked my way up. So, um, latex appliances, which is the next thing, these can all be made. Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures in a second that shows you how to do that. Okay, so the latex prosthetic or appliance is really, really simple. You see the, um, the latex in the uh, left-hand corner? Uh, I, that was stuff I bought online. I needed a container. 
So in my shop, I found this container of wire nails. Um, that's the container over there. I used vegetable oil. And what I did was I coated the, uh, the inside of that plastic container with the vegetable oil. Um, that's uh, cutting the plastic. And over here, that's pouring the latex into the container. And what I did was I took, that's a, a clamp. I held the plastic piece, it dried overnight. I was able to remove it from the plastic container. And then that's basically just trimming it with scissors. So what happens is when it dries, yeah, up here it is. This is basically it. And to adhere this to somebody, you're gonna use what's called spirit gum. This is something that you can either purchase online or uh, Party City was another, I found this in Party City. And um, you put a little bit on here, you know, you put it wherever you want it. It becomes a little tacky. And then what you can do is you can use uh, foundation makeup. This is regular makeup that you can buy in the store. And you know, it comes in different shades and you can use that to blend in to the skin. They also make these makeup wheels that are very expensive. Um, and they come in different flesh tones. So if you have you know, somebody with you know, a darker tone, you can use that as well. Okay. Okay, so I was telling you about my son and on a Halloween party. They do a, uh, a fundraiser at this church, one of my assistant scoutmasters, and they have a, a, a Halloween maze and they make up everybody. Of course, I volunteered. Little did I know that this former assistant scoutmaster was gonna show up. He's an EMT, he works for the city. And this is what he showed up with. And I looked at it at this and I was just in awe because I could not believe all the stuff he had. I thought I had a lot of stuff, no. This guy had stuff that just blew me away. Uh, the makeup wheels, uh, I don't know if he had the makeup wheels, but he had all kinds of shades of, um, of different makeup, and he had all kinds of, um, of different color makeup, all kinds of blood, fancy cases, and I said, wow, I was pretty, pretty impressed with this gentleman. So, um, okay, let's just find where I am. Okay. So practical, oh, this is my son, by the way. He did, this gentleman, uh, that's a latex wound that you see. And what he did was he took tubing and ran the tubing, it's a little hard to see, but the tubing goes underneath this latex appliance. He adhered it to my son's neck and gave my son two things to squeeze filled with blood and my son, I forgot what room he was in, but they were in different rooms. I think he was in the barber chair uh, and every time somebody came in, they would have groups coming in and he would squirt this blood and it was just, I mean, you can see he, he was hysterical. Uh, so, you know, you never know what you're gonna run into. So, practical applications. Can you guys see using this at your meetings and uh, doing demos with this um, after you know, getting some techniques? Do you think it's something that you know, you like to bring back with you and something that you wanna try? Because I gotta tell you, it's a lot of fun. The kids really, really like it. So um, some of the practical applications that I was thinking of, um, I talked about the surprise injury at a meeting. Be a little careful with that because I was telling Rich I did that last year and um, some of the kids were really grossed out by it. Um, and there was, it, was a, it, was, um, uh, it was a splinter, it was a piece of wood. Um, I hid the tubing in the fake skin and the blood was spurting out and uh, some of the boys were not too happy about that. Uh, why I did it was I wanted to see how they would react and I wanted to see how the older boys would react to a, a mock injury. And it was very interesting to see, you know, how they, they were able to handle it. They thought it was a joke at first. And I said, I, you know, this is, this is real, guys. This is as real as you're gonna get, you know, at a meeting. Uh, and I wanna see how you handle it. So, um, 
we learned a little bit from it. I want to try doing some more of this, as I said, I'm, you know, learning as, um, you know, we, we're going along. And as I'm picking up different techniques, um, I, I'd like to share that with my troop. Um, involve scouts, very important. Scenarios for injuries, uh, you can come up with numerous ones. Car accidents, um, you know, objects being impaled, uh, you know, in people's bodies. Um, shock, there's so many different things you can go into that are appropriate. Community first aid demos, one of the things I was thinking of was involving the fire department, our local fire department, um, having us do like a community day where um, we could show off some of our skills once we got to that point where we were really good. Um, you can ask the fire department to participate, I think they would love it. Um, Troop Halloween party. Unfortunately, our Halloween party was canceled because of the storm. Uh, but one of the things that I was thinking about was having boys, you know, dress up using makeup techniques. Uh, once they learned how to do this and come to the Halloween party with all this, you know, crazy stuff. So again, there's a lot of stuff online that that you can that you can find. Um, so lastly, my email address. Um, Rich is gonna send you that if necessary, if you have any questions uh, and you want to, he's, he, absolutely, absolutely, I'll be, ha I'll be happy to come down. Um, and, you know, again, any questions, Rich is going to send you um, a, a, a folder with a lot of information in it. And um, I think, you know, once you get the boys into this, you'll be really surprised at how impressed they are and how much they'll learn from it because, you know, you can pick up the scout handbook and read, um, you know, what a second degree burn is or what a partial thickness burn is. And I don't think it's as effective as doing something like this. And this really lends itself to, um, you know, uh, being interesting and, and, you know, holding their attention. I mean, they're not going to walk away if they see somebody with blood on or if, you know, they're a victim, they're going to be more interested. So any questions up until this point? Any comments that you want to make um, at all? Okay. I mean, I would... Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but something like this, something, yeah, something like an appliance or something with, you know, um, with a, a puncture wound, with uh, a piece of wood, and a little bit of blood really portrays the injury. You don't have to go crazy. You know, you can start out really, really slow and make it as simple as possible. Um, you know, the higher end makeup and that sort of stuff is something that I got into and I wanted to experiment a little bit. But you don't have to, you know, the blood for a lot of people and a lot of the kids, it, it's, you know, it's a little disconcerting. And they, some of them are really bothered by it. But I think what, again, we're trying to do is get them accustomed to this kind of thing. So that, you know, uh, you know, and you know, you know, in terms of the Boy Scouts and our, and our whole philosophy with helping and, you know, that scout that's, that's there and if there's an injury, he knows what to do. Um, we want to try to get them to, you know, learn about this stuff so that, you know, if they see something, they know how to treat it. You know, if they see somebody that's bleeding and, you know, they're, they, they're prepared with gloves and, and you know, and, and they understand what they have to do, um, you know, they don't have to spend time thinking of it because, you know, a person bleeds to death, death very quickly. Um, so we really need to, you know, I think use this to help them. And it's a great, great teaching tool. Um, the other thing, I'm going to take this off my head because it's been like driving me crazy and itching me. So um, 
By the way, the, um, they make removers for this sort of stuff. Um, it's spirit gum remover. So be aware of that also, that some of this stuff, if you're going to use the spirit gum, make sure you get a solvent because you don't want them going home with this stuff. And um, it's, you know, thankfully this stuff wasn't too bad. Uh, so you want to make sure that they have this stuff available. Again, most of it's washable. Uh, cold cream is also very good uh, in taking makeup off from what my wife tells me. Cause I have no idea. <laughs> It's a learning experience. Um, First Day Jeopardy is really cool. Rich is going to send you again that link. This has it. I think you guys will have a lot of fun with this. So let's do, Rich, we have a um, few minutes. So uh, let's, um, let's do this. It's, a, it's um, a PowerPoint that I found online. I think it was something with literature, and I adapted it for first aid. It's a little bit of an older PowerPoint show, um, but um, again, I, um, I sort of spent some time and I adapted it for first aid. So uh, let's uh, pretend we're doing Jeopardy. And um, you know, there's different ways you can certainly do this. It has music. which I'm going to stop in a second. Okay, so the categories are first aid one, first aid two, bites and stings, weather related, and potpourri. Um, so what you would do is each one of these um, numbers obviously represents an amount. Um, what I had was the patrol set up and um, each one of them, I, I, I think I, if I remember, we didn't have a buzzer system, although they do make Jeopardy buzzer, buzzer systems that you can make online. Um, good project for a scout working on electronics, by the way. Um, I think I gave them um, a, a plate with a, on, on, a, uh, on a paint stick, and if they wanted to answer the question, they had to raise it up. So simple, but you know, something that you know, will, will indicate that they want to answer a question. So let's do first aid one for 100. Um, so first action required when you come upon any serious injury. Anybody? Ooh, let's see if you're right. Kiss. <laughs> okay, so what you would do then is you click on the little guy there and you go back to the Jeopardy board. So it's actually really a simple thing. I was pretty impressed with it. And I said, you know what? That's what I need. I need something simple. Okay, I mean, what do you guys want to do? Tell me. Give me a category of the number. Weather for 300? Good. Good. I like the, the higher numbers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Or perspire. Okay. Give the lady a kiss. <laughs> Oops. I'm sorry. So what is perspire? Okay. Um, would you like to pick a category and a number? Okay. I don't want you to notice also the numbers turn yellow so that you know which questions you've, um, you've already answered. Okay. Any ideas? Now you, okay, go ahead. What, what is? Okay, good. We want to make sure we use our Jeopardy style here. Okay, so in other words, and, and okay, so, and what is water is correct. <laughs> Okay, so somebody else? Um, first aid two for 400. First aid two for 400, okay. Who knows? Ooh, ooh. Very good. Rich gets a kiss. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and so let's yeah, let's go right to the five hundred dollar ones. So, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh. Bites and stings for five hundred. Tough one, huh? What? Ooh, very good. He's good. All right, all right. Okay. You want to do, uh, let's do weather related. Let's do all the, um, the $500 ones and then we'll do the final Jeopardy. Okay. So, the body's cooling system fails at the core temperature rises to life threatening levels above 105 degrees. Anybody know what that's called? Ooh. Correct. 
Okay, let's do um, first aid one. Let's do all the 500s. Okay, person injured, life threatening condition, and the circulation system is not providing blood to all parts of the body. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Boy. <laughs> All right, let's do potpourri and then we'll do final jeopardy. Okay, we talked about that one. Anybody know? Compound fracture. Open or compound fracture. Okay, yeah, we want to spread the chocolate around. So if I come home with this, my wife's going to kill me. All right, let's go to Final Jeopardy and um, see what we can do with that. Oh, gone. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. I keep clicking on the wrong one. Okay. Final Jeopardy. Close, close. It's actually two, there's actually two parts. Okay, you said the Heimlich maneuver. What is the BSA um, treatment, by the way? Does anybody know? Uh, no. If they're choking, any ideas? It's actually, it's the Heimlich maneuver, and then there's one more thing that um, we also teach. Um, any ideas? Okay. Final it's back blows and abdominal thrusts. So um, actually the American Heart Association, when I took it, we did, it was the Heimlich Maneuver. The BSA policy um, the procedure for, for that is still back blows and an abdominal thrust as well. So, because um, that, you know, I looked at that one, I said, mm, and then I looked in the, the, the um, our handbook and I checked the first aid uh, merit badge book. I wanted to make sure that that was correct and that is correct, so. Yes. Right. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So, good. <laughs> and that's important. It's really important, I think, for the adults to have that. Um, so that's basically, it's a, it's a PowerPoint template. Um, it does work on Mac. Um, I did try it on my Mac, and it does work. Um, it was a little bit glitchy. But it did work. Um, I found it better. It worked on, you know, via Windows. It's an older Windows uh, PowerPoint file. But again, um, you can throw anything you want in there. You want to change it, um, go feel free to adapt it. Um, you know, I would say share with one another. If you come up with something that's interesting, uh, any, any techniques, definitely share out with one another. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's a learning experience. I, I'm far from an expert, but I, I think, you know, I've learned enough to bring it back to my troop and have them work with it. And, um, you know, again, see if there's other things that we want to, you know, do in the future. So, How mm. you um, this actually is the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, Rich and I, did, like I said, we did Wood Badge and we did a Trainer's Edge course in May and um, you know, we had to do a demo and I said, oh, first aid. So uh, you know, it, we really, we only had Rich, what, about maybe five, ten minutes to present. It was a real, uh, I'm a teacher by trade, so I'm used to sort of getting up and doing this. Uh, but it, when you have a time limit, it was a little, you know, different. And, um, you know, it was kind of, it, it was very effective. I think, you know, a lot of the techniques we learned in the trainer's edge was really, really good. Um, there were things that I never would have thought of a as a teacher. And, you know, going through all the methods of teaching classes, um, you know, this was good because we were able to learn how to apply some of this stuff to instruction and, you know, teaching our scouts. And that's really, you know, important. So, um, and sometimes it's not so easy, as you guys know. So I thank you very much for your attention. I know it was not easy coming out tonight. Thank you. And thank you, Danielle, for uh, helping me out. And uh, Rich, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. So again, any questions, please feel free to email me. And um, if there's something I don't know, I will certainly uh, speak to the, the gentleman who sort of got me started, which was Steve Davies in the Rough Rider District. He's an EMT, and he was doing the demo at my outdoor leader skills. And um, again, he, he sort of like pushed me to you know, do this stuff. And I kept emailing him questions. So, um,
Yeah, thank you, thank you. I think it's. I think you guys will have fun with it. I think the kids will love it because um, I think it's a, it's really a lot of fun once you get into it. So, and hopefully my wife will forgive me for spending all this money on makeup. That like, but you know what? That's that, that's what I said. I said, honey, you know, for my birthday, um, right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'll tell your mother how much money I spent. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bribery, bribery. <laughs> all right, thank you all again. You. We appreciate really it. Thank Thanks you. for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So, no problem. You, well, you would be open to that if we contact you? Yeah, sure. Come on Absolutely. Right. I'll be happy to do okay. it. I would love it. All you right. know, um, I, I'll bring my stuff and. Um, you know, we can do some some basic stuff with um, okay. the group, and uh, I think you know. I think once I demo it, they will. You know, it, it, it'll take. I think they like it, yeah. Because yeah. so, like I said, it's really hard to um, you know to do this stuff over and over again and keep their interest. I think if you you know you do some simple stuff, like wow, that's cool. Oh, how do I do that? And the boys will just really take off with it. So. This is a what? Okay. Oh. Hi, my name's Ken. So we can get a close up. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So, anyway. Uh, good job. I'm just sorry there weren't more people, but that's okay. You know what?